Kia ora, good evening. Police are warning gun owners to review their home security following the theft of 15 weapons and a large amount of ammunition from an Auckland gun collector. The cache of guns and 5,000 rounds of shotgun ammunition were taken from a Bucklands Beach property between 9am and 5pm yesterday. The burglary comes on the eve of Operation Unification, an Australasian-wide two-week campaign aimed at encouraging the public to report firearms in the possession of unlicensed holders. During the operation, firearms licence holders are also urged to make sure they store weapons safely and securely. Police estimate that more than 950 firearms are stolen a year and in more than half of all instances, more than one firearm is taken. The real estate market in the south is being, descri being described rather as flat in QV's latest report. In the south, overall property prices remain similar to 2012 and 13, despite the latest monthly QV Residential Price Movement Index showing nationwide residential property values for May have increased 8.2% over the past year. Across the entire Southland market, prices are approximately 6% lower than mid-2008 levels when the market was at its most recent peak. Registered valuer Andrew Ronald of Invercargill says there's evidence poorer quality homes in South Invercargill have sold well below 2008 levels. Examples include a property in John Street purchased in November 2007 for $199,000, which sold in April this year for $150,000, and a Yithan Street property purchased in September 2005 for $87,000, sold in May for $73,000. Flat market conditions have extended to Southland with most price levels in townships easing over the past two to three years. In the coastal township of Riverton, properties are currently selling for 20% less than the peak 2007 to 8 period. A Tawak Street property purchased in February 2008 for $363,000 sold in February this year for $282,500. Conditions in Tianao show homes are selling for similar or slightly less, while Winton has steady demand but price levels have eased over the last two years. In eastern Southland, Gore's market is flat across the entire market, with limited change to price levels in the last two years. Invercargill valuer Robert Todd agrees the market is holding steady and puts uncertainty down to interest rates and the LVR lending policy. We've seen a drop off in... Um and new purchases coming in, particularly obviously with the low deposit, and it has that flow-on effect to those people that are moving up to perhaps their, their second home and still have low, low equity levels. So we, we have seen a, a drop-off in sales. He also believes people don't want to make large investment decisions due to caution around the future of TY and says it could hang over the market for some time. I think people are holding off from um, decisions, particularly if they're involved in that uh, that line of work or, or contract to TY. Um, but yeah, we definitely believe it's having a flow-on effect. Despite caution around the future of TY, the South's farming sector remains buoyant. The rural sector's doing, doing very well. We just need a flow-on effect um, from that. We've still got the zero fees scheme at the SIT. And I think people need to, although we have an increase in interest rates, I think people need to look at, um, you know, historically they're still uh, relatively low. So, um, yeah, you know, Invercargill's ticking away, it's just we're not getting the growth, um, the likes of Auckland uh, or, or the Wakatipu or, or Christchurch are, are seeing. And outside investors looking for good yields are beginning to re-enter the market. We're getting one or two trickling back into the market. Um, it's particularly those people that have got a, a reasonable amount of equity and we've noticed a few uh, blocks of flats selling um, over the last 12 months, um, which is positive because prior to that uh, we had a, a period where there was very few sales occurring. So yeah, there seems to be some investors coming back into the market. May property sales figures for the region will be released on Monday. Margot Sutherland at South Today News. Federated Farmers believes that Kiwi farmers are to thank for the promising future of New Zealand's economy. The 2014 Situation and Outlook for Primary Industries released earlier this week shows a 16.3% increase in primary sector imports to $37.7 billion on the previous year. 
This translates to increased farm gate incomes of 22% and an increase in off-farm spending of 11%, which has a direct influence on rural and provincial economies, according to National President for Federated Farmers Bruce Wills. He says yesterday's increase in the OCR is no surprise, but does hope the Reserve Bank is right and that the exchange rate will fall, otherwise farmers could see a sharper reduction in exports and farm gate incomes. A local service was the welcome recipient of some recent fundraising events in the city. Southland Riding for the Disabled Association was presented with two cheques today, one from the Southern Railway and Modlers Club who fundraised over $2,000 with an event at the Masonic Lodge recently and $300 from the YMCA which was raised from raffles. Based in Otatara, the non-profit service provides confidence, independence and well-being for people with disabilities through therapeutic horse riding and education about equine care. The donations will be used to upgrade riding helmets and to purchase new activity items. Several work experience students were also on hand at the centre today learning about equestrian skills. Coming up after the break, the passage of parliamentarians continues through the city and we have the week that was. Welcome back. Since being appointed to the role of Minister of Pacific Island Affairs, Pasita Sam Lotuinga has been making his way around the country consulting with New Zealand's Pacific Islanders. Last night the Minister attended a meeting in Invercargill where he met with Pacific Islanders now calling Southland home. Hunter Andrews asked him about key issues confronting the community. Yeah, Pacific communities, you know, they, they want the same things all New Zealanders want. They want jobs, they want security around law and order and, you know, in their homes and on the streets. Um, but they also, you know, want an education system that will, you know, get their kids educated with skills and to get into jobs, but also, you know, a robust health system that if you get sick, you can get looked after. So it's it's pretty simple formula. Let's talk quickly about Southland. Uh, we hear all the time about enormous house prices yes. in Auckland. Why not encourage Pacific Islanders? Why do you think they don't come down here? Obviously the weather's not ideal, but yeah. houses are amazingly, uh, yeah. reasonably priced down here. Well, look, there's a lot lot to offer down in Southland. You know, there are jobs, there is um, cheaper housing. It, you know, it is, it is a little bit colder for some Pacific people. But look, my dad migrated here. He, he's lived here, and, you know, in the past, and a number of Pacific people are down here. I think, you know, we've got to encourage them to come for lifestyle, for, um, for jobs, for opportunities. And, you know, there is, um, you know, a lot to offer in Southland. And that's certainly what I've been discussing with local mayors here about, you know, about promoting opportunities and economic development for Pacific people in, in Southland. And so you actively are out there encouraging people to, to think have, about relocating? Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I, I've talked to a number of Pacific groups about that. Why not? Um, but, you know, as I said to the mayors today, um, we need a, a programme that, that looks after them. They can't just, you know, talk about jobs. We need to actually have jobs. We need to have accommodation. Uh, there needs to be a transition process. It is hard coming on your own. Um, people will come when they, you know, you can bring your family, you can bring, you know, a, a group of people down here. Uh, the REC scheme, the regional um, scheme around, you know, employment for Pacific people is working around the country. It's, it works in, in Nelson and in, in the Hawke's Bay. I'm sure that, you know, given the right opportunities, Pacific people will migrate, or more Pacific people will migrate to, to Southland. The Invercargill Police are opening their doors to the public tomorrow as part of the National Police Open Day. Between 11am and 2pm, police will be conducting tours of the Invercargill station. There will be displays from the Armed Defenders Squad Search and Rescue, as well as from police partner agencies such as Community Patrol New Zealand, Māori Wardens and Neighbourhood Support. Inspector Olaf Jensen says the Open Day provides an opportunity for the public to look behind the scenes as to how a police station operates. Inspector Jensen says Invercargill Police have held Open Days in the past, but this is the first time the station has been open as part of a coordinated national approach. A helping hand for small businesses in the form of tax compliance cuts will be the result of a Labour victory in September, according to Opposition Re Revenue and Small Business Spokesperson David Clark. Mr Clark was in Invercargill today meeting with the Chamber of Commerce and Crow Horth's tax principal Craig McAllister. This government's been dragging its feet on 
uh, small business tax simplification. Um, it's been done in the UK, it's been done in other jurisdictions successfully. There's no reason why New Zealand couldn't get on with it. It is simply the case that this government uh, is happy for the playing field to be tilted toward the really big players. And that seems to be the only motivation I can see as to why small business isn't being given a fair deal. What do you think would be the first cab off the rank, if you like, if Labor was in office <coughs> post September? Um, the tax simplification stuff has to start going ahead. The red tape uh, review stuff that Leon Dalziel started could be ramped up very easily and very quickly to have officials going through legislation, getting rid of unnecessary regulation in order to make businesses more productive. You know, um, farmers are traditionally national voters. Do you think you hold enough policy to, for those farmers to actually consider changing their vote? Well, I hear lots of farmers saying uh, that they might withhold their vote this time round. Some saying they'll vote Labour. Um, I, locally, I've been outspoken on the Invermay issue, and again, there is a feeling that the government isn't listening to the regions. And farmers uh, are not stupid. <laughs> they know when uh, they're not being looked out for, and so I think that sentiment is coming back and will play out at the polls. You've already met with the Chamber of Commerce down here, South and Chamber of Commerce. What messages were they giving you? Well, the Chamber is concerned about regional development too. Um, they have a strong view that the regions need to be looked out for, that government needs to interface directly with the regions to get the message about what's going on here. Um, we in the Labour Party can see, uh, and we hear it echoed everywhere we go, a two-speed economy emerging. Some places are going ahead, others are getting left behind. And if New Zealand as a whole is to succeed, everybody needs to be succeeding. The OECD agrees. They say that now the agglomeration benefits in the cities have mostly been achieved and what's needed in most Western countries is for the regions to catch up and that involves lifting the lowest skilled workers, getting everybody into productive employment and using the infrastructure that's already there rather than trying to build new stuff in, in the cities. That's all from the news team this week. Sports up next. We'll leave you now with the week that was. Have a great weekend.